Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make a custom sound add-on for Left 4 Dead 2. So what you first want to do is open up Steam, and then go to Library, Home, then here. Set this to just only Tools. This will make finding Left 4 Dead 2 authoring tools easier. So once you've found Left 4 Dead 2 authoring tools, go ahead and install it. And then after you've done that, you can close Steam out of the foreground, but leave it running in the background. So now, go here. So, whatever drive Steam is installed onto, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Left 4 Dead 2, Left 4 Dead 2, go to this folder path, and then go into the sound folder within the second Left 4 Dead 2 folder. Alright, once you've gone here, you can now go ahead and choose what sound you want to edit, unless you already have one in mind, but specifically I'm going to choose the rifle shooting sound. So, you go into Weapons, Rifle, gunfire if you're also changing the same sound and basically overall for changing the sounds after this point what you want to do now is go ahead and make a folder for your sound add-on so in my case I'm going to call mine gun shooter and now what you want to do is go ahead and recreate the path from the actual sound folder leading up until the folder that contains the sound or sounds that you're going to change. So in my case, I would be making the folders sound, weapons, rifle, and gunfire within my main add-on folder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, after you've done that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and copy over the sound that you're going to replace with your own custom sound into your add-on folder itself. So make sure it's copied into the new folder that corresponds to the existing one for the base files. So in my case, it's weapons, rifle, gunfire up to here, and right here, it's weapons, rifle, gunfire, and then in that final folder in both cases, uh, there's rifle fire one in this area. So now you can go ahead and close that with the base folder location. Just only leave open your custom uh, add-on folder, but it still has the base sound that you copied over into it. So now open up Audacity, and if you don't already have it, you can install it for free. All right. Now what you want to do once you have Audacity open is go ahead and drag in the copy to base sound and after you've done that go ahead and get your custom sound that you want to replace the base sound and drag it in to the audacity project along with the base sound so now I'm just going to play both sounds for reference Okay, so now you may notice here that the sound is a lot longer, but not only that, that the hertz rate does not match, and of course this will create problems. So what you want to do to fix this is get your custom sound. If this is the case for you, you might have the exact same hertz rate in that case. You don't really have to worry about uh, that part, but for the people that do have this problem, go here to the file name on the little track here, or just click on the arrow right there and go down to rate and switch it to the same amount as the original sound which would be 44,100 in this case. And after you've done that or if you don't have that problem and you just want to wonder what to do next go ahead and just make this sound the same length as the original. So in my case I'm just highlight dragging and then deleting that. So you also might have the case where your sound is not long enough and you want to make it long enough to match this one or go further than it so you can actually cut it down so in that case just highlight your track go to effect change speed and you can actually make it longer by doing that you can also of course do the same thing and make it shorter if you need to okay and also it's a good idea to add a little fade out at the end because as far as I've heard there can be issues with the sound, uh, there's not a fade out at the end, even though I haven't really seen this for myself, I've heard 
that might possibly be the case. So yeah, just go to effects, fade out, or effect to fade out. I don't know why they have it as effect instead of effects, but that's fine. Anyways, after you've done that, after it's the same length and all that stuff is ready, you can make whatever changes you want to, but you don't necessarily need to at all. I mean, of course, as you can see here, the sound of this track is definitely louder overall, but I'm not going to change that because that's not necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the original track here by clicking on the X. So now it's just a custom sound left in here. I'm just going to preview the sound. What I can do now is go to File, Export, Export as Wave. Also, before I even do that, just an extra thing just in case someone's wondering, if you have an issue with the 32-bit float thing not matching or whatever, you can just go ahead and change it here to whatever you need to. Um, and then you can go ahead and like switch it to what matches the left or two bass sound. Anyways, export to wave right here, file export, export to wave. Then make sure encoding is set to sign to 16 bit PCM. And then go ahead and navigate to your custom add-on folder where you have the copied bass sound. Go ahead and replace that. I double clicked yes. Okay. And then you can also save your Audacity project if you want to. But I'm not going to do that. That's basically if you want to come back and make some changes later. But I don't need to do that. Save project before closing? No. Okay. Now that you've done that, what you want to go ahead and do is navigate to the original Left 2 folder here. When I say the original, I just mean the first one that shows up. So Steam, Steam Apps Common, Left 2. And then you go into the bin folder. And after installing the Left 2 authoring tools, you'll now notice that there is a file in here called vpk.exe, which you may not have noticed in the past if you looked in this folder. And what you can do now is to package your add-on. You can drag your add-on folder into vpk.exe, and you can also make a shortcut of this somewhere else and then just drag into that shortcut and package it that way, which is what I did, as you can see here. So just to make it easier on myself, I'm going to go ahead and drag into vpk.exe on my desktop on that shortcut. But before I do that, I also want to mention this. So you can make a file called add-on info.txt, so yeah, it has to be a .txt file. But here you can just put in different information. I mean, I'll provide one of these in the description if you don't want to type this in yourself and set this up. But there's also other versions that include more information, but I try to simplify it with just title, author description, and that stuff just to make it easier. And app ID is related specifically to Left 4 Dead 2 and version, you can change this in the future if you update your add-ons and stuff. But yeah, this is basically information that you'll notice in the end game list when you go to actually test it out. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this into the main top level add-on folder here in my custom add-on overall. So as you can see when I open it up, it's right in here. So I mean, this makes sure that to offer you description and stuff, because if you don't include this on info.txt and go in game, the on will work. But the problem is there will be no description, no title or anything. It'll just be like blank if it does show up in the list. So you may now want to have an image show up in the end game add-on list for your add-on when you go to view it in there. So in order to do that, first get your image create it or get it off the internet and make sure it's a .jpeg so I'm going to bring it down here and the thing to know is that if your image is a JPEG sometimes it won't work still so you might have to actually in that case put this into another program or put it into a site and then save a version through there of the same image as a JPEG and then it should work I don't know why that even works. I guess it's like some sort of formatting issue with this. But yeah. Then also you can use a program or another site to convert your image from a PNG to a JPEG or some other file type to a JPEG if you need to do that. But then take your image after it's ready, drag it into the main top level folder of your whole add on folder. After you've done that, what you want to go ahead and do is name it add-on image. 
Okay. After you've done that, you can go ahead and close out your add-on folder. Now you want to go ahead and package your add-on. So in my case, I can just drag my add-on folder into vbk.exe. You have a shortcut right here on my desktop. Or if you don't have a shortcut, then you're going to go into Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Left 4 Dead 2, Bin, vbk.exe, like I mentioned earlier. You can just drag it in there and have it get packaged. So, yeah. But like I said, I'm not going to do that because I already have shortcut on here. Okay, I can close out of that. Grab my add-on folder and drag it into vpk.exe. And as you can see, it packages a .vpk right here. So, the thing is, this picture showing up for mine, even though yours is probably going to be blank. Like, assuming all you've done is followed this tutorial, not followed any other tutorials on making Left 4 Dead 2 add-ons. Like, fully. Um, this is probably going to be blank for you. And the thing is, for you, the reason why this is blank and why it's not for me is because for you, you don't have the program called GCF Scape installed when I do, which is why it shows the purple picture here. And this program is mainly used for looking inside of add-on folders and extracting and copying over different things from them and stuff like that. But you don't need it, which is the reason why I didn't mention it in this tutorial, but it is free though if you want to get it and is needed for creating other sorts of add-ons for Left 4 Dead 2. An important note about GCF Scape is that you need to have both the Microsoft.NET Framework and the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Service Package 1 in order to actually run the GCF Scape program. Unless we're talking about an older version of GCF Scape, in which case you would just need to have the Microsoft.NET Framework installed in order to run the program. So I'll provide a link in the description which leads to download links for both the different versions of GCF Scape and also the Microsoft.NET Framework and the Microsoft Visual C++ things. So yeah, you can also go ahead and just find different versions of it on the internet if you don't want to go ahead and use any of the download links here for GCF Scape or the Microsoft things that you need. Anyways though, now that I have the packaged add-on folder, what I can go ahead and do is first off I'm just going to move it up here. Then I can just go ahead and open up here. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Left 4 Dead 2, Left 4 Dead 2. And then go into the add-ons folder and just drag and drop your add-on into here, your package add-on file. So you can just click drag or click drag while holding down shift to move into there which is what I'm doing but if you don't hold down shift and it's just going to copy it over so yeah now it's ready now I can go ahead and test it in game so I'm opening up left for it too skip that pressing enter skip that So if I go into add-ons, you can see here, title shows up, the author shows up, description shows up, and also the custom image shows up there. So yeah, click and done. All right, and also you can get into a match more quickly to test out your add-on or just in a different way by going to options, keyboard mouse, and going to allow developer console, making sure it's enabled done and then on the top left corner of your keyboard there's a little squiggly line which is known as the tilde key so you can go ahead and press that and once you press that it'll bring up this developer console here so now you can just go ahead and type in a map to just enter that map so I'm just going to type in map space then just go down to drainage to play on that map so yeah here we go and just press enter by the way to actually get into that. So you may have like a certain object that has a certain sound that may not be available in all the maps or something like that. And in that case, you're going to have to do more specific steps to actually get to uh, an object to actually see the sound. But in my case, because it's a gun, 
this is a lot easier, and you can do this with all the guns. So, once you're in, press the tilde key again, and type in SV cheats one. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the down arrow to go to this little autocomplete thing, then type in one. And now, search give and whatever weapon you have. So in my case, just rifle, give rifle. So now, listen to the sound of the rifle. As you can see, the sound works. Everything's all good. All right. Now what you can do is go ahead and press the tilde key again, just to make this a little bit faster on yourself. And then just type in exit to actually exit out of the game at this point. So yeah, that's how you do that. And to actually upload it to the workshop is the next step. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the left to authoring tools, which I probably should have added on my desktop for convenience purposes, but I didn't. So yeah. Okay, so now what you want to go ahead and do when you're in here is go to Workshop Manager. I'm going to cancel this and take forever to load. Okay, now you can either click here, Publish New Add-on, or you can just go to File, Publish New Add-on. doesn't matter which one you go to. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm just going to call this, I don't even know, like Bouncy Sound. At least that's what it sounds like to me. Bouncy Gun Shooting. You know what? Bouncy sound shots better. And yeah, call it whatever you want, put whatever description you want to. Of course, then now you have to actually find that actual add on file. So in my case, let's go to desktop. Oh, my bad. No, it's not there. Left 4 2 add ons, and I have it in here. We just have it there so I can actually use it in game. So select it from there, it says the size, yeah, there's the name, there's the description. So now you can go ahead and set tags, set all this information. There's a preview image, which I got one right here on the desktop. There's a bell, which I know does not match with the bouncy thing at all, but I was originally going to use a different sound. I ended up changing it, but I didn't change the picture, so yeah. But now we go into here. You can just add on whatever tags you want to. I can just do weapons, sounds, rifle, and yeah, that's about it. All that stuff selected, except the terms of the Steam Workshop contribution agreement, which I'm not going to view. And just go to upload, and that's literally it to actually upload it to the workshop. It'll say error. Steam community error. It does that every single time because it takes you to the web Steam, not the actual local version on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But then actually open up Steam through here to actually view it. So Steam workshop items. As you can see, it shows up right here. And you can kind of see extra information, how many people visited, all that stuff. And. You can also look at these different things and change it. You can change the title, description, language. You can add and edit images and stuff like that. As far as I know, you can't change this cover image, from what I remember, unless you actually like re-upload the add-on or, I guess, replace things about it, not completely like take it down and re-upload it necessarily. Add and remove contributors, edit links, so on and so forth. Change vis visibility, make it public, and do that stuff. Anyways, though, but if you want to like go ahead and uh, replace the add-on too. You can go ahead and update it. So in my case, because it's going to take forever to load the add-ons, to actually load that one would take a while. The one that I just did. So I mean, I'm just going to click on one of my older ones, just for example. Well, you can click on edit add-on. Then you can go ahead and change the image and do different things like that. Like if I want to change the image to this for my other add-on, like as the main image that shows up for people, I could do it if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. So I mean, but yeah, that's basically it. You can manage your add-on through here if you want to take the time to wait for it to load. If you're like a person like me, there's a bunch of add-ons through here. And, but yeah, that's pretty much it.
that's a tutorial of how to make the add-on, upload it to the workshop, and all that stuff. So, yeah.